the release of the new Toyota Supra has come a lot of buzz in the automotive industry, possibly more than any other car released in the recent years. With that buzz, there's been some good things said, but there's also been some bad things said, namely the fact that it's not a Toyota Source engine, that it only has 335 horsepower, not a big increase over the Mark IV Supra that was so long ago, and also the fact that this car doesn't have a manual transmission, but there's been some exciting news released recently that just may show that Toyota is going to put all of these concerns that you have to rest. And we're going to go over all of that in today's episode, so make sure to stay tuned because all these concerns that you have just might go away. Welcome to the channel guys, my name is Gavin and let's just jump right into it. So the thing that Toyota's received the most flack for about the Supra is the fact that the motor in it is not a Toyota sourced engine. It actually comes from BMW, the engine being the B58. But that fact alone is a little bit deceiving because Toyota actually had a big play into this engine development that went into the new Supra. If you guys haven't seen the video released by Albin going into great detail explaining how the development went between Toyota and BMW on this B58 engine, go ahead and click this card up here, check that out if you're interested in the details because he goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to go into. But basically if I boil it down simply for you guys, Toyota and BMW are obviously very different companies with different ideals. BMW is known for producing high performance inline six engines, and Toyota is known for having very reliable cars. If you ask me, those two coming together and developing an engine basically together means that you're gonna get kind of the best of both worlds. So within the development of this B58, Toyota basically went over every part of the car, especially the engine, to make sure that it was reliable. Things as big as the pistons and rods, all the way down to smaller details like bolts that hold things together. If any of these things did not pass Toyota's quality tests, they went back to the drawing board, were redeveloped or tweaked in some sort of way until it got BMW's stamp of approval. With that being said, as well as all the other details that Albin goes over in his video, we now know that Toyota had a big part in the development of this B58 that they're using in the Supra. Just like Yamaha had a lot of part in the development of the 2JZ with Toyota. Now on the topic of the engine, and specifically the power, we know that the B58 in the Supra produces 335 horsepower. What we also know that's very exciting is the fact that this is a closed deck, fully forged engine. Forged crankshaft, forged connecting rods, and forged pistons. Which is a formula for big horsepower in the aftermarket. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction that within the first 12 months or less of the Supra being released to the general public, that car will make 1,000 horsepower. 1,000. Now I'm not saying that it's going to come with 1,000 horsepower from Toyota, from the factory, but what I'm saying is that the Supra has a huge name behind it that means big aftermarket power. And the engine that comes in it has the right formula to make that happen. So what I'm saying is that every aftermarket performance shop that has their hands in either the tuning or performance parts of Toyota's or BMW's is going to want to be the first one to push this car over a thousand horsepower. So again, my prediction is that within the first 12 months or less, some company will have a Toyota Supra making over a thousand horsepower on the stock block. Mark my words. Now that's all exciting and everything, but what about for those of us who want to buy this car from the factory with more power and not necessarily make it in the aftermarket? Well, here's where some of the exciting news comes into play. Recently, The Drive published an article where Toyota of Great Britain put out a tweet that said some exciting stuff. What they tweeted was, there are plans in the pipeline to introduce high performance variants of all the models in the future. Watch this space. What that means is Toyota has plans to introduce higher performance variants of every model across their range. Trucks, SUVs, and specifically cars as well. What this means is the models that come out the way that they are are going to have a step up in performance at least available for you to be able to purchase in the future. So what does this mean for horsepower and what does this mean for performance when it comes to the new Supra? Let's take a look at the company BMW that they partnered with on this car and maybe it will give us a few hints. First of all, let's take a look at the BMW M2 which came with the N55 engine that had 369 horsepower. In later years, there was a higher performance version of that car released with a completely different engine, the S55 from the M4 that produced 405 horsepower. Completely different engine with a significant jump in horsepower that they put into the same car. Now what we also know is that the BMW Z4, the car in partnership with the Supra, has a higher performance version of the B58 which has not 335 horsepower but 382 horsepower. That's another possibility that they could release. 
just really easily to have a big increase in power over the one that's in the car right now. But the next thing that I'm about to tell you makes the most sense to me and also offers the most horsepower. The P58 that's coming in, the new Supra and the Z4, has a high performance version that will come in the M cars called the S58. The first use of that S58 comes in the new BMW X3M and X4Ms. This engine looks awesome. Let me tell you guys about it. In the normal versions of the X3M, this S58 engine will have 473 horsepower. But there is an X3M competition model that has a bump in power over 500 horsepower, 503 to be exact. That's the most horsepower BMW's ever released in a factory production six cylinder engine. And it just could make its way into a high performance version of the new Supra. Historically, BMW has always released higher performance versions of the cars that they have. Toyota is saying that they want to do the same thing. It just makes sense that they would use the higher performance version of the B58, the S58. So maybe watch out for that in the future. There has been a lot of naysayers out there saying that the Supra is going to flop. It's not going to sell very well. And I totally understand why. But let's take a look at the early sales numbers that Toyota's having to deal with with this new Supra already. There has been some European sources already stating that in England, they're not even taking pre-orders for the Supra anymore because there's been so many already. Basically, you can only put your name on a waiting list. Every vehicle that they've already allocated for this first line of production has been sold. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's probably not only just in England, it's probably all over the place, even in the United States. Toyota has said that a lot of what they're going to do in the future is based off of sales numbers, so it's looking pretty good so far. I do understand why Toyota didn't come out with the biggest things, a manual transmission, high horsepower numbers right away, because they don't really know how this car is gonna be received. But it seems like it's being received pretty well, and if this continues to happen, then we are probably going to see higher performance versions available, especially ones with manual transmissions. It's entirely possible to put manual transmissions in the B58, in the new Supra, but it is going to be based off of demand. So if you want to see a manual transmission car, if you want to see one with potentially 500 plus horsepower from the factory, go buy a Supra. Now I do think that a lot of people thought that this partnership between BMW and Toyota would only be for the new Supra, but it looks like it's going to be for other models as well. Japan's Best Car Magazine recently reported that Toyota's other company, Lexus, is going to be partnering with BMW and putting that same B58 engine from the Supra in Lexus's new line of IS cars. If this is true, it really looks like Toyota and BMW are forming a relationship that's going to last for at least a while in multiple different cars. And when I heard this, it really made me excited because I just think that Toyota and BMW coming together are going to produce some of the best modern engines produced today. What I think is, once this car hits the streets, I mean, it hasn't even been tested yet, it hasn't even been in consumer hands, once this happens, it's going to shock a lot of people. Toyota and BMW spent a long time on this car. They spent a long time with the engine development, making sure that it was high performance, making sure that it was very reliable, and they also individually spent a lot of time in the handling and chassis tuning of this car, making it what I think is going to be one of the strongest competitors on the market for 50,000 bucks. I'm definitely very excited to get my hands on one, both a Z4 and especially a Toyota Supra, drive these cars and see exactly how they handle. And let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think that Toyota will end up releasing higher performance versions like it says in this tweet? Do you think that the sales will be good enough for them to release manual transmission version and higher performance versions in the future? What I can say is that if you're interested in the new Supra, if you're interested in seeing this car once it hits dealerships, or if you're interested in just keeping up with all the little pieces of information and news rolling out about this car as it gets closer and closer to being in our hands, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you guys don't miss an episode because I'm gonna be covering all that. Or if you're just interested in learning more about BMW, this company that's partnering with Toyota and seems like it's gonna be partnering with them as well in the future, whether it's older BMWs like the one behind me, my E36 M3, or newer BMWs, we cover a lot of that stuff on this channel as well. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Three.